Okay, here we go. So this is part two of the warping exercise that we did in class. Uh, this is taking this jungle beat, um, pre-warped hopefully, so I hope you've done this already. Uh, we're going to take it, we're going to chop it up into individual slices, uh, loop those slices, and then trigger those slices to create our own kind of mashup, our own chop um, of the original sample, to create our own loop. Um, so I've already done this, I've already warped this. I'm going to play it against the metronome. <laughs> It's fine, it's cool. There are a few bits I could maybe tidy up a little here. Let's pop this here. Now, being accurate with this loop is way more important because we are going to go ahead and chop it into individual loops. If we don't get these warp markers right this time, it's going to affect our loops for the individual slices. So please take more time and effort to get this right and don't worry if you're adding more warp markers um, than you feel is necessary. It's actually super important that we just get the transients right for this. So go wild with the warp markers, make sure everything's snapped to grid. Uh, when you're finished, um, remember that I said that we should duplicate the original, so we've always got that original to fall back on um, if things go belly up. Um, so I'm going to select the clip and hit Command and D and that will duplicate it for me. I'll drag it out of the way of the original as well. Pardon me. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to start isolating parts of the clip. Oh, I'm burping again. Right. Two ways to do this. Um, we could use the uh, length, the loop length values down here, and I could just click and drag that until I get the part that I want. Uh, but I'm going to suggest a different way, something that works a little bit easier for this exercise, and that is to use the loop brace at the top. I've just clicked it and it's turned a darker shade of, of black. Um, that's our loop brace. See how there's triangles at the beginning and end of these, uh, of the loop brace? And if I hover over those triangles, my cursor changes to a bracket, and I can click and drag the loop brace. Left click and drag. And I'm going to highlight that first uh, quarter note. And when I play that, it's just going to loop, and it's just kind of kick. So let's call this kick. Uh, select the clip, Command and R, and then type a new name, and that will allow you to rename the clip. Um, play it again. Cool, that's going to be my first individual slice of this clip. Uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select that clip again, or select the kick clip, and hit Command and D. Um, it's made a copy of it, I'm going to double click to make sure I'm working with the correct one down here, and I'm going to click and drag the loop brace to the next uh, part of the sample that I want to trigger. Let's listen to it. So that's like my snare roll. Um, I'm going to rename this clip so that I know what it is. Select it, Command and R, Snare. Uh, rinse and repeat. Uh, select the clip, Command and D to duplicate. Select the loop brace and move it around. I'm just moving it to, to, the, next, to the next quarter note every time. Um, that's kind of like a hi-hat roll. Hi-hat roll. Uh, duplicate again. And then move the loop brace. Whoops, a daisy. And that's like the off snare. Uh, once more for look, I'm gonna duplicate the clip and move it along. I'll call that shuffle. It's high hats again, kind of. We'll call it shuffle. That's it. I've got five, right? I'm gonna get rid of some parts of the interface here that I don't need. I've got five, <clears throat> and they're gonna act as the starting point for this um, this kind of mashup thing. Uh, so if I play these now, cool. Um, four very, five very different sounds that we can use to kind of rearrange this loop and create our own ting. Um, notice that I do have the metronome on here while I'm uh, clicking these, and that's just to check again that everything is in time with the the uh, tempo of the track. Okay, so we did a couple of things to do this, um, to start triggering. Um, notice when I'm triggering right now, um, it's only letting me change once every bar. And if you remember, that's because of this global quantization meter up here. I'm going to change this um, immediately so that I can start to trigger these more quickly. I'm going to change it to eighth notes. The 
Yeah, now I can trigger the clips more easily. I'm just um, I'm just left clicking the play icon on the clips to get them to play there. But now it's allowing me to trigger clips every eighth note instead of every bar. That's going to become important. Um, so I am triggering just using my mouse and keyboard here. Not the most intuitive way to trigger clips though. So I'm going to suggest that you uh, hit Command and K to go into key map mode and map each of these clip slots to numbers on the keyboard. There's a reason I'm telling you not to use letters and just to use numbers and that's because the letters by default, the QWERTY keyboard, um, is used to transmit uh, MIDI note values by default. We can turn that off up here but um, for ease, for this exercise, I would just map your um, clip slots to numbers. So I'm going to select the first one, uh, the kick, and hit 1 on my keyboard. And then I'm going to select the second one and hit 2. Third, fourth, and fifth. And then come out of key map mode using command and K again. Okay? And now I can use the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to trigger these um, sounds off. Cool. A bit more tactile, um, loads more fun to play with, and allows you to kind of do more uh, frenzied triggering than you would with a mouse and a keyboard. That's pretty much it. Um, what else I did, I duplicated all of these clips so that I had more clips to work with. Um, but I actually went ahead and made changes to these clips, do you remember? So like, I'm going to pitch this kick down. And I'm going to pitch this snare up. So remember, double click the clip that you want to affect and then we've got all these sample options down here. Let's do something pretty extreme with this hi-hat roll. That's fine. Let's do a really low off snare. That's fine. Let's make this one a bit crazy too. Okay, I'm going to turn the metronome off at this point as well. Right, and then I'm going to key map them. Command and K. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. So now I've got 10 clips to play with. Um, let's go ahead and have a little jam. Sounding pretty good. Do take the time to make some changes to these second lot of clips so that you've got more source material to play with here. But last stage, we're going to record this now into arrangement view. Um, remember to hold shift and then hit global record amp. Wow, that didn't work. Awesome. That's because I've got it turned off as a default preference. Um, hold shift and hit record and it will put it kind of record armed. It won't start the playback. As soon as you start triggering clips now, it's going to start recording into arrangement view. So I'm going to um, show that in action and then go ahead and start messing around with my slices. So let's have a look. Oi. So look, it's recording now into arrangement view. Press stop when you when you've finished. Um, space bar is fine on your keyboard. Um, so that wasn't the greatest kind of mashup or chop up by any means, but I'm just kind of trying to prove a point here about the process. So that's okay. So look, I've recorded it over into arrangement view, and you can see that it's recorded all of that clip triggering in real time. If I want to hear this, I have to hit this back to arrangement button. Otherwise, it's going to keep listening to session view instead. So I'm going to hit this button so that I can hear what I've recorded. Let's forget about that first bit and just play it from bar four. Whatever, it might not make much musical sense, probably not the best, but I'm going to show you now how we consolidate this. Say that we really liked this kind of, uh, this four bars here or whatever it is. Is it three bars? Four bars, okay. Uh, five bars. Um, let's say that I wanted, I was really happy with this and I wanted to consolidate it as a as its own clip. I'm going to select it all, click and drag, and then hit Command and J. It'll take a second, depending on how many clips you've got there. And hey, now we've got one contiguous audio clip. And we can right click that, show in Finder, 
Oh, and it's renamed it something strange. That's just because it's named the same as the clip that was in there. So I can just rename that if I want to. Uh, loop chopped. Whoops. Chooped. Chopped. That'll do. And that's it. You can take that, put it on your memory sticks. That's part of your personal sample bank at that point. Loads of fun. Okay. Uh, I haven't demonstrated follow actions. See if you can work that bit out yourself. I'll give you a little tip. Um, follow actions live down in the clip properties down here. You have to activate this little L button. And follow actions are per clip. You can set an instruction. Um, or you can select multiple clips and assign the same instruction to multiple clips. I'm not going to go into it. I'll probably make a video at uh, a later date. Um, but for now, this is what I want you to do. Chop up, well, first of all, warp that um, loop so the attack transients are really sharp on the grid. Then chop up your looping into individual hits. Um, go into key map mode, map your uh, clips to numbers on your keyboard, and then have fun triggering. Okay, this is me signing off for this video. Peace, peace, peace.